let's cover a few immunodeficiency disorders linked to humoral immunity. So immunodeficiencies refer to disorders where we're missing some aspect of the immune system, which is going to make the individual susceptible to certain types of infections. Uh, immunodeficiency, immunodeficiency disorders are either inherited, so that means they are uh, genetic in that the parents donate defective alleles to the offspring, and in the case of recessive disorders, where we're talking about two copies of a gene on the autosomes, that both copies will need to be mutated, or a dominant mutation, where one copy needs to be mutated and it can be dominant over the other one, and some are X-linked disorders where um, they're on the X chromosome, and so males tend to exhibit more of those disorders because they are XY, only have one copy of that gene, so they only need to inherit one bad copy, whereas females have two X chromosomes, they need two copies. So those are their inherited immunodeficiency, immunodeficiency disorders. There are also spontaneous immunodeficiency disorders, so spontaneous mutations that can arise. So let's learn a few. The first one we'll talk about involves the RAG enzymes. So if you remember, RAGs, uh, the enzymes are responsible for gene rearrangement. They make the BDJ recombinase, and they're responsible for in developing B cells to uh, um, recombine the variable, the diversity, and the joining gene segments together to create the heavy and light chain variable regions. So in some individuals, they inherit uh, two bad copies, two mutant copies of RAGs. And so they do not make any of the RAG enzyme. So if you don't make the RAG enzyme, you cannot rearrange your heavy chain gene or your light chain gene, which means you will not make VDJ regions, which means you will not make heavy chain protein or light chain protein. If that's the case, you're going to suffer from a very severe immunodeficiency disorder called Severe Combined Immunodeficiency Disorder, SCID. Sometimes it's known as the boy in the bubble disease because these individuals have no um, adaptive immune system because they don't make B cells and they don't make antibodies. That's a huge part of your immune system to be missing. They also don't make T cells because it turns out, we'll learn in the next unit, RAGs are also used for T cell receptor gene rearrangement. So if you inherit bad copies of the RAG genes and they are non-functional, you will not have any adaptive immunity. No humoral immunity, no cell mediated immunity. You will only be left with innate immunity, which is really not enough to keep you protected against all the pathogens in the world. So those individuals need to have a bone marrow transplant typically, or um, live in a sterile environment, and that's why they call it the boy in the bubble disease. Um, there was a very old movie that covered that. Um, so uh, SCID, uh, due to inherit, inherited defects in the RAG genes, there is uh, another syndrome called Omen syndrome, which uh, gives individuals partial RAG activity, so it's not completely absent, but it's partial, but it still yields very low recombination, and so very low B and T cell numbers, uh, and really not enough to help you uh, fight infections. So these are severe immunodeficiency disorders that can be treated using bone marrow transplants to basically replace the bone marrow and give an individual cells that will, in fact, have the RAG genes in them. So that's one immunodeficiency disorder. Uh, there are defects in B cell development. There is a gene called BTK. BTK makes a protein, which is a kinase, and it's involved in B cell development. So you need a functional BTK, it's a kinase, to go through the pro-B cell to the pre-B cell stage. Um, we didn't really talk about its function during B cell development, you don't have to worry about it, but if you're missing a, a protein that's really important, important for B cell development, and you won't be able to develop B cells. So in these individuals, they lack uh, just humoral immunity. They lack the ability to make B cells and antibodies. Uh, so they have T cells, but they don't have B cells. Uh, BTK is found in the X chromosome, so it is an X-linked genetic disorder. Uh, so it's more likely to occur in males than females. So uh, this disorder is referred to as X-linked A-gamma globulinia. Right? So that means they do not make antibodies on their own. 
and that would be bad. You would not be able to live very well if you couldn't make antibodies. Uh, you would be susceptible to a number of types of pathogens, uh, including many extracellular pathogens such as bacteria. You still have the innate immune system, you still have T cells, but you don't make antibodies. This can be treated uh, either by lots of antibiotics or by transfusing individuals with immunoglobulins. So there is a very tr easy treatment where you get injections of donated immunoglobulin. Um, so when people go to donate blood, sometimes they t separate the plasma out from the blood. That plasma contains antibodies. So you can be getting injected with somebody else's plasma and that it contains antibodies. And that's a treatment, that's a way to sort of recover some antibodies uh, to get it from somebody else. So that would be, um, yeah. All right, the one more we'll cover, one more immunodeficiency disorder uh, linked to the um, humoral immunity is hyper-IgM syndrome. So what's hyper-IgM syndrome? So it's gonna require us to remember that for naive B cells, um, they express IgM and IgD on their surface, and when they recognize a pathogen, naive B cells undergo um, clonal selection, clonal expansion, and some population of naive B cells will differentiate into plasma cells and begin secreting low affinity IgM. Some other groups of this population of B cells will undergo isotype switching and affinity match and somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation so that you end up generating high affinity, either IgG or IgA, IgE, depending on what it is switched to. Now, you've got to remember what's involved in isotype switching and affinity maturation. It it's a thymus-dependent interaction. So you need a helper T cell interacting with the naive B cell to tell it to switch isotypes and to tell it to undergo somatic hypermutation. So this is the thymus-dependent antigen response. So the um, CD40 protein on the surface of naive B cells interacts with the CD40L protein on the surface of T cells, helper T cells. The helper T cells secrete cytokines, and those cytokines in this interaction triggers the production of AID and UNG, which are both used for isotype switching because they land on the switch regions, and used in somatic hypermutation because they land on cytosines in the VDJ regions. So for cells to undergo isotype switching and affinity maturation and somatic hypermutation, you need this T cell interaction and you need these uh, enzymes to be turned on. Some individuals inherit genetic defects in any one of these four uh, proteins. So if you're missing any one of these four proteins, if you're missing CD40, if you inherit genes that are defective to, and don't make CD40 properly, or you're missing CD40L, or you're missing AID, or you're missing UNG, missing any one of these four proteins will lead to the inability to undergo isotype switching, somatic hypermutation, and affinity maturation. So an individual who suffer from hyper-IgM syndrome or hyper-IgM deficiency, they are unable to undergo isotype switching and affinity maturation. So missing any one of these four proteins leads to hyper-IgM syndrome. Why do we call it hyper-IgM syndrome? Because those individuals do not isotype switch. So they rarely make IgG or A or E. They make primarily IgM. And that IgM is low affinity. So they make lots of low affinity IgM. They make very little to none high affinity isotype switched antibody. So these individuals are susceptible to numerous types of bacterial infection, ex uh, including uh, extracellular bacteria, fungal infections, bacteria in the GI or the respiratory tract. And you should know why, because if you can't make IgA, you can't secrete IgA and protect those tracts. So um, those individuals uh, will suffer from immunodeficiencies because they can't make isotype switched antibody. Um, treatments for these individuals, again, they can be given antibiotics to treat infections, or they can be transfused with immunoglobulins. So again, donors donate blood, and when they donate blood, they donate plasma. They can pull the immunoglobulins out of people's plasma, pool them together, and inject them into people who can't make their own antibodies, like this person. 
The person can make IgM, but it's low affinity, and IgM only stays in the blood and the lymph. So injecting a person with somebody else's IgMs, and usually you pool a bunch of people's IgMs together in these transfusion, that will give them the protection that these other people have, and now this individual will have it. So those are a few examples of some uh, immunodeficiencies that are related to humoral immunity. There are more, but those are the few that we'll learn about.